Greetings fellow humans, Bad Mark here with another transmission from Mech Tech Keyboards and today we're taking a look at a new keyboard from Akko, a wooden keyboard. Now I know that there have been, there have been previous kits um, for particular keyboards that you could change out the case for a wooden keyboard, but I think this is the first, if I'm not mistaken, and if I am, please correct me down below, I don't know everything about it keyboards i try but i don't uh, but i think this is the first uh kit or first keyboard that is being offered already put together as an in-stock product with a wooden keyboard case now this one i do believe is loaded with Akko piano pro v3s uh, which are a nice poppy linear that i quite enjoy i'm usually a tactile guy but linears that catch my eye like the piano pros they stand out to me, and I do like them. So without further ado, let's go ahead and dive in and see what we have in the box. So as always, I first like to see what they include in the box before we actually take a look at the keyboard. Um, one of the things that I do appreciate about Akko, it's one of the few companies, and I can only think of another one off my top of my head, that actually include what are called QA, QC cards. This is usually put in by an inspector in this case i would guess inspector number seven that went through to ensure that everything's packaged properly and he may have even done the test sometimes there's uh, somebody to test the pcb somebody to test it fully assembled and somebody to test the packaging to test that everything is you know ready to go like it plugs in it's it has the parts it's supposed to it has all the switches they're all working so it is a nice thing to see because I'm sure I'm not the only one. If you've ordered more than a few keyboards, you may have received some that were completely DOA. We do have, thankfully, a 2.4 gigahertz receiver that is branded because there are so many. It just, every company needs to do this with their dongles, especially when there's not a pocket for the dongle inside of the keyboard. So if we ever, you know, come across it on the floor, we're like, oh, what keyboard could this go to? Oh, I'm only got X number of Akos. I can test them all real quick instead of, oh, I have to test them against my entire collection of 2.4 that don't have a pocket. And then it does look like we have a manual here. All right, so this is a three mode. Uh, they call it multi-mode, but it is a three mode. It does have three slots for Bluetooth devices, one 2.4 and one wired mode. And then it has some of the system commands that are already programmed in. And in this accessories box, let's see what we have in here. Oh, wow. <laughs> that is crazy. This is wax. They actually have wax that you can use to keep that wood looking always nice, hydrated. There's um several types of wood finishes that they just i mean they don't need it like daily but every once in a while especially from just touch and use and dust and everything else you clean it off and you apply some of this wax onto the board and then you buff it off with this cloth that has a, a texture on it and it's going to keep the wood not only looking nice but lasting a lot longer than it would if you did not take care of it it's most likely carnauba wax but i'm not certain so i'm not going to guess i'm going to see if they have something listed when i go through the specs along with that we do have four extra oh five extra piano switches with a separate key cap puller and i have been quite fond of the new revision of Akko switches they're well priced we also have a separate switch puller some people do prefer these i like that they don't really bend out of shape um and can use them especially if they're strong this one seems to be one of the stronger ones i've had a couple that literally you could just bend with one finger and they bend over so it's like eh, plastic's gonna bend it they're not good but these actually look like some pretty good switch pullers and last but not least we do have a usb c to usb a rubberized cable and here we are with the Akko mu01 a 65% wooden and gold accented keyboard 
Thankfully, they do include a dust cover. I, I keep saying this, but I think it's important. Having a dust cover is not just for protection of the keyboard while it ships. It's for protection of the keyboard always. Keeping a dust cover on the keyboard when you're not using it is going to help to keep things clean underneath, which means it's going to buy you that much more time with the keyboard. The keyboard will last longer, the better care you take of it. And now taking a look at this keyboard. Now this is a beaut. I'm not sure of what wood this is, but it's it's got a very, very nice texture to it. We do have a very sunken, <laughs> um, quite sunken USB-C connector, which thankfully the cable they provide isn't going to be trouble. But, and it is quite wide. Because I even, let me see. No, I don't have any of the thicker ones right handy here. But I think that even some of the wider cables are going to fit through because it's not like just tight up to the USB-C. It's, um, it's got a little bit of space, I would say, probably two to three millimeters on, on either side, and maybe a little bit more on the top and the bottom. So that shouldn't be too much of a problem. I'm going to guess this is probably like a gold plated aluminum. But these keycaps, yeah, that, this keyboard just sounds and feels lovely right out of the box. These keycaps are almost like, I mean, they are, it's art. This is just gorgeous. The expression on all of them, the dark bamboo, the sunrise or sunset, the mountains, um, the Japanese style house, the, the water and the river with the writing. I mean, just everything about this. It's, I almost feel like I'm dealing with a piece of art, not, a, not something that I'm going to use every day, but I will say this is going on my desk as soon as I'm done with the review because I quite not only enjoy looking at it, but I enjoy the feel of it. Now, it does appear to have a gasket mounting of some sort because, yep, oh yeah, it definitely has some sort of gasket mount. Let's see what we've got underneath here. First, we'll take a look. I was for sure I knew that these keycaps are die sub because there's no way we're going to get all those colors and that intricacy on a double shot. So let's see how thick these keycaps are. Nice. 1.6 millimeters in thickness. I mean, it's about the thickest you're going to get. I mean, I think 1.7 is the thickest I've ever seen and probably there's going to be some, because I think once it probably reaches 1.8, 2.0, they're probably getting too thick and probably going to have issues there. But 1.6 is probably why we have that nice, deep, natural tone to the, to the keycaps, well, to the sound of the keyboard, because we also have these beautifully inlaid keycaps. Now, checking out the stabilizer, it's going to go ahead and pop out the Piano Pro switch. Let's see what we have underneath here. All right, so we do have hi-fi layers. We have PET plastic, and above that, we have the IXPE sheet. This is called hi-fi because it does bring a certain, it acts kind of like a low-pass filter, but also an enhancer of certain tones. And for most switches, especially long pole switches, it just delivers a really nice, crisp tone that just can't be missed. So these are plate mounted stabilizers and these appear to be new I have not seen these color this uh, color of stabilizer come from Aka before now we are lubricated but we're not over lubricated thankfully um, when there's too much lubrication on the stabilizers they're just going to collect dust dust is going to be attracted to them just from general static electricity and eventually it's going to gum up and start to become mud and that's when stabilizer will start to stick 
and just become stutterish and just not very pleasant to use. But taking a peek in here, it looks like if we want, we could go with screw and stabilizers. I'd like to, when I do come back to this, I'm going to see if this plate actually allows, has the space for screw and stabilizers. I do believe I actually have a set of Ako screw and stabilizers, but I have to check. If I don't, I'll have to order some of the newer ones to make sure. I mean, that'd give me the best chance to ensure that they'd fit. But taking a look at the plate, it does look like we have an FR4 plate and there is gasket mounting, as we can tell, as we can push down on it and it actually gives, as opposed to a tray mount that's going to be hard. So we have lovely wood with a gasket mount. I'm very tempted to get in there, but today we're just going stock. But I already know things I'm going to do to this keyboard when I come back to it. Thankfully, we do have the option for screw and stabilizers, but even the stabilizers that are on the plate are very well attached. They have very little wiggle, if any at all. So that's not going to cause any problems, which didn't sound like it. And we do have a 3 and 510 hot swappable ECB with south facing LEDs. I got to say, in my short time, well, at least I feel like it's been a short time. It's almost been three years since I've been in this hobby. I am just continually amazed, um, especially this past year, at how good pre-built keyboards are starting to not only feel, but sound. This is just, for a lot of people, especially, especially those that enjoy Asian um, artwork and style, I think this would be a perfect gift. Yes. Some people are going to be like, where's my function row? <laughs> how do I how do I work without my function row? But once they learn, they can just hit at function 1 for F1, function 5 for function F5. And that you can program these keys. We'll have to see what they're already programmed to. So I'm of the opinion that I think 65% is probably middle ground it's probably the smallest size that the majority of people are going to use um, because they're not going to be overwhelmed with layers as as if they had a 60 percent although i've seen a lot of people say i couldn't use anything less than a 65 percent use it for a while get used to layers and then say yeah give me 60 percent i think 65 percent my opinion anyway is a nice middle ground for a lot of people that you know, may not think that they can function without a full-size keyboard. And I mean, yes, I use a numpad many, many times, but I can add it next to my keyboard when I know I'm going to be doing a lot of database entry, Excel entry, spreadsheet, whatever, that I'm going to require a lot of numbers. I could just pull it out, turn it on, and get to town. The majority of people, I think, don't need a numpad full-time. And there are some people that may not even need it on a regular basis. So and that's why I believe 65% is probably the smallest for a lot of people. Though I do know that some people just, whether out of fear or just out of comfort, they, the smallest they'll go is a TKL because it still has that familiar layout. They can still get to the, you know, navigation buttons and the arrows are nice and expanded out for them i was one of those i thought there's no way i can work on a 60 and a 65 percent i've actually got to the point where i could reasonably use my 40 percent and get things done honestly this thing is a piece of art this is this is artwork this is something that i mean especially I mean, I'm sure everyone's seen those offices where it's, you know, primarily this color wood and gold and or silver accents or brass accents. But this keyboard will fit into a lot of those those environments. It's it's almost it's almost executive type keyboard, if that's even makes sense. Executive decor, perhaps. But it is, in my opinion a tool that is also seconds as a work of art. Just the specs. Today we are taking a look at the Akko MU01, a 65% three-mode walnut wooden 
mechanical keyboard. It comes preloaded with an FR4 gasket mounted plate, a walnut wooden 68 key case, a three and five pin south facing hot swap PCB with hi-fi layers of IXPE and PET above the PCB, also loaded with Oco V3 Piano Pro linear switches, which are pre-loop, and Mountain Seclusion Die Sub PBT in the MOA profile keycaps. It is preloaded with a 4,000 milliamp hour battery and comes weighing in at 966 grams. The chin of this keyboard sits at 24 millimeters from the typing surface and the back sits at 35, providing for an angle of typing of 7 degrees. This keyboard MSRP is $119.99 at Occo. So all in all, I've got to say, I'm quite impressed with this keyboard. Again, I can't think of any other in-stock keyboards. Um, except for one other one. But like I said, I don't know if it came like that or you had to buy it as a kit. I'd have to look. Regardless, this is a keyboard and a new material or one that we do not see very often, walnut wood. And the fact that it is gasket mount, it is not just, all right, let's put some, you know, uh, metal studs in there and screw it to that and just call it a day. No, they put some time and effort into the design of this keyboard. And I'm going to be quite interested to get in there but today we're staying with its stock though so, oh, i don't know i'm not even going to try to begin to look at how to take this apart because i want to enjoy its stock because this it really it's just a nice stock keyboard um i think for a lot of people this is going to satisfy that 65 percent want with such a nice sound profile and don't get me wrong i'm usually an sa keycap or sa profile guy myself but i have as of late bought a couple of moa keycap sets and i'm really starting to get used to the profile one of the things that i like that there are similarities with sa keycaps obviously they are not as tall and basically they have a uniform profile whereas sa don't um but they have they were scooped tops that's almost like they're hugging each and every single one of your fingertips and that's one thing that i really do enjoy from these scooped tops these rounded nice you know it's got like a nice little spot for my fingertip to just sit in there and be comfortable now, i've got to say this is um this is quickly and I haven't even used it full time, but it's quickly becoming one of my favorite 65% keyboards. I almost want to just put it up, but I want to use it. So it's like, is it a piece of art or is it a tool? It's both. <laughs> I don't know. I'm, I guess probably because this is one of, I mean, I have one of the other key, I don't know why I can't think of the brand right now, but it was a keyboard that I bought the I don't know if it was walnut or bamboo, the case separately, but it was just a tray mount. And not only did everything not fit well in there, it just did not sound good. Um, like it sounded way too echoey and hollow inside when I had no foam, but then I put foam in there and then it's just way too muted and it wasn't very, I don't know, I modded it like several times and then finally I just gave up on it. I'd have to go look for it right now to even know where it's at because it was kind of a disappointment. But I've got to say that with this MU01 from Akko, I am... It, 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 this is a very nice keyboard. And while I know there are 65%, I don't know, fully loaded, preloaded in this price range maybe a little bit more maybe a little bit less but this is wood yes we have aluminum come around all the time but this is wood and it is a lovely finish and um i'm definitely going to give it a what i believe is a carnauba wax treatment and see how it looks after that i'm not going to sit here and wax my board on camera so that'll have to be for another day <laughs> anyway um i really enjoying this keyboard 
Um, I think that for a lot of people, this is going to strike a fancy, um, especially for touch typists, because I know that there's not a lot of legends for the side keys, for what are the modifiers. Everything about this keyboard is nice. Even the fact that they didn't go with a PC plate. With a PC plate, I don't, I don't know if this would work as well. And obviously, I don't know if a wooden plate would work. I've never seen a wooden plate for a keyboard, so I was that was kind of more of a joke. But with the FR4 plate, we still have a little bit of stiffness because you know this is a wooden keyboard, but we have flex, so it's not that harsh bottom out that we would get from a tray mounted or a steel plate keyboard or even aluminum keyboard. I think an aluminum keyboard just wouldn't work in here. So to me, I think the FR4 is almost the perfect plate to mix with the wood. Um, though I would be interested in seeing if they're going to offer any aftermarket plates. I'm also hoping that MU01 starts stands for the first in this series and that we're going to see more, like a 75%, maybe a TKL, maybe a 96% or an 1800. I'd love to see a wooden keyboard in different sizes, especially with the appointments like this one does, because if they do, I know I'd be wanting to collect all of them because they really, they're a functional piece of art. And I like that. So I'm going to go ahead and leave you guys with a stock sound test of this MU01 from Akko. I'm going to place links down below as well as my discount code for both Akko EU and Akko Global. So I'm going to go ahead and leave you guys with a stock sound test of this work of art come to life. If you have any questions, any comments, please feel free to drop them down below. If you have any ideas or anything that you would like me to take a look at when I do come back at this keyboard, because I will, because I definitely want to open it up and see what's going on, on the inside. I'm going to try out some screw and stabilizers, see which fit, which don't. Um, maybe do a tape mod, maybe change out whatever they've got in there, see what kind of sound profiles we can get out of this keyboard. But I definitely intend to come back and play with this. Until then, I want to wish you wonderful people a beautiful day. And until the next transmission, keep calm and keyboard on.